Okay, so this is section 2.5. This is called implicit differentiation. I have two functions written on the board. One is defined explicitly, one is defined implicitly. In general, explicit and explicitly defined function just means it's been solved for y. It has been solved meaning that the output variable is isolated. An implicitly defined function in fancy talk means <laughs> not solved for y. That's the difference, okay? An explicitly defined function means that you have the output variable by itself. An implicitly defined function means you don't. They're just mixed together. Those x's and y's co-mingling. All right. So far, every function that you have differentiated has been defined explicitly. Today, we're going to differentiate implicitly defined functions. It may seem like, well, why would we need to? We could just solve them for y, right? Until you hit functions like, oh, like that, where it might be tricky to solve it for y, right? I, we could, I don't know the cubic formula, there is a cubic formula, right? Do you guys know the cubic formula? Anyway, you could solve it for y, but we, of course we can make up other functions where it would be really, really, really tough to solve it for y. So in that case, you have to find another way to find the derivative. All right. So I'm going to give you a few little tips. I'm going to get my better marker. This way. That's a good one. So. Okay, so here's something you need to know. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Okay. Does everyone agree with that? This is more than just a name. And by the way, this thing's called a differential. We have to give it a noun. So it's called, we're, we'll, we're going to refer to differentials a lot today. This is more than just a name. This is actually the answer. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Believe it or not, the derivative of x with respect to x is dx dx. The derivative of q with respect to x is dq dx. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The, what if I switched it up? The derivative of y with respect to t would be dy dt, right? Whatever your differentiating goes on top, the variable you're differentiating with respect to goes on the bottom, all right? So this is called a differential. All right. Whenever, this is going to sound like the most confusing thing you ever wrote. Are you ready? It's, we'll clear it up though. Whenever you differentiate a variable, that is not the variable you are differentiating with respect to, you must multiply the answer by the appropriate differential. Clear as day. All right, whenever you're differentiating a variable and it's not the variable that you're differentiating with respect to, you have to multiply your answer 
by the appropriate differential. So we're going to be differentiating different variables today that aren't just x. Now we're going to start though, I am going to go back to our two little friends here and I'm going to explain to you something that you might not be aware of and that's that when you differentiate an equation, you always differentiate both sides. You know you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides, right? I can multiply both sides by 5, I can add a 6 to both sides, right? All these things. I can differentiate as long as I do it to both sides. So here's the thing. When I di differentiate y equals 3x plus 5, the derivative of the left side, what is the derivative of y with respect to x? What is the derivative of y with respect to x? It's dy dx. So when I take the derivative of y with respect to x, it is dy dx. I'm actually differentiating the left side. Now, the derivative of x with respect to x is dx dx, but we don't write it because dx dx is just the same thing as 1. So technically, this derivative is 1 dy dx, this is 3 dx dx, and that of course is just 0. Here, if I'm defined implicitly, the derivative of negative 3x is negative 3 dx dx, which we don't write because it's just 1, plus, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? dy dx equals, what's the derivative of 5? Zero, because it's constant. If I were to solve for dy dx, whoa, oh my stars, I get the exact same thing. Okay? Now, when you're taking a derivative of y or q or anything else, you do the derivative process exactly like you do with x. So you still use power rule, product rule, quotient rule, constant multiple rule, chain rule. All of those rules still apply no matter what the variable is. If you notice in your homework you did derivatives with v's, right? It doesn't matter what the variable is, you still do the derivative the same way. So we're still going to do the derivatives the same way. The difference though is that we're going to have a variety of letters. So we're going to start with Keep picking up the bad markers. A good marker. Here we go. All right. Find dy dx if y squared equals 5x. Find dy dx if y squared equals 5x. Is this an... You can make an argument either way. But is this an explicitly defined function or an implicitly defined function? Implicit. Technically, it's implicitly defined. It's not technically solved for y. If I wanted to solve this for y, what would I actually get? Square root. Not just the, so there's just one square root? Plus or, minus. Plus or minus, which is really darn important, right? So you actually end up, is this a function? No, because it's, we got the square root. You have two y's for each x, right? Okay, so what happens, this is not a function. You get that square root of 5x and the negative square root of 5x. So it's not a function, it's a relation. You have to put that plus or minus if you solve it for y. Most kids mess that up. So we're better off not solving for y. You're, it's actually easier to differentiate <coughs> implicit usually than to try to solve these complicated equations for y. This is not that complicated, but that's okay. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the derivative of y squared. Pretend y is just any other letter. What is the derivative of y squared? 2y. Now, since we are not differentiating with respect to y, we're differentiating with respect to x, if we differentiate a variable that's not x, we have to multiply by the differential. So the de we have to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x, or dy dx. So the derivative of y squared is actually 2y 
dy dx. And I'm going to show you why in just a moment. What's the derivative of 5x? Well, five, five, five. Just, just what? Five. Just 5. Yeah. Don't say 5y. It doesn't just, it's not magic. It's just 5, right? And you can do times dx dx if you want, but that's just 1. All right, so now if I have to solve for dy dx, my dy dx is 5 over 2y. And I'm done. Okay, 5 over 2y. The derivative of y squared, sometimes it's easier to see why you have to multiply by the differential if I explain it in the context of chain rule. I know how much you love chain rule. So here's the thing. If I rewrite my y squared like this, No. There's no plus or minus. We never took a root or anything. Yeah, right? I, I wasn't sure. Because like, if you did it in explosive form, then you would have the plus or minus. If I wanted to solve for y and plug it in so that my derivative was in terms of x, there would be a plus or minus, right? But the y assumes that. Okay. The y has it yeah. embedded in it. So, no, you don't have to put a plus, don't make up plus or minuses mathematically where they don't need to go. If you had to replace this with x, then, yes, you would have two separate derivatives. One with the positive, one with the negative. All right, just so you understand why you have to multiply by the dy dx, this is chain rule. If you take, if you think of this as this like this, remember we put the two out front and reduce it by one. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the argument. What's the derivative of y? dy dx. Okay? It's chain rule. So you always have to multiply by the derivative of the argument. On the x side, if you think of it like this, right? Well, you get 5 times x to the 0 times the derivative of the argument, which is dx dx, which no one writes because it's just 1. Right? So it's only when the variable doesn't match. If you're differentiating a y with respect to x, you get a times by the differential. If you're differentiating an x with respect to x, you don't because it's just 1. I'm going to take it up a tiny notch. Differentiate y squared equals 5x with respect to t. There are no t's in this problem. That's okay. t in applications, what does t almost always stand for? Time. Usually what will happen is we'll have some function, say like for every I don't know, for every clock I make, I get $15. And so it's some like dollars and clocks. So if I want the rate of money that I make and the rate of the clocks that I'm making, right, I take the derivative of both with respect to time. We'll get more into this later on. But anyway, oftentimes you'll differentiate with respect to t and where, when there's no t's in the problem. That's okay. So tell me, we're going to just do this slow, the derivative of y squared. 2y. Now, what would I multiply by? What would my differential be for this? dy dt. Very good. dy dt. The derivative of 5x is just 5, but I'm differentiating with respect to t, so I have to multiply this by dx So beautiful. Yes. dx dt. And then you just stop there. There's nothing to solve for. Okay? Very good. All right, let's take it up a notch. All right. So, I have to add in to make sure we have time. We, I'm going to do one with product rule just for fun. All right, so find 
dy dx if 3xy cubed minus 2y equals 7. Okay, that's good. Find dy dx if 3xy cubed minus 2y equals 7. This first term has a variable times a variable. What rule do we have to use for this? Product rule. Now, when I have a coefficient and a variable and another variable, there's two ways you can do it. Honestly, what I personally tend to do is I kind of lump the coefficient with whatever it's next to, and that's like my f, and then the next guy, that's like my g. So that's what I do. You can just put the coefficient out front and just do the xy cubed derivative and then multiply it in at the end. That's fine, too. All right. So we're going to go very slowly. We're finding dy dx. dy dx. So the derivative of 3x is 3 times the second term, which is y cubed, f prime g. Okay? plus f, the first function, which is 3x, times the derivative of the second term, which is y cubed. What's the derivative of y cubed? 3y squared. 3y squared times y dx. Do you understand why I had to put a dy dx there? Mm -hmm. Why didn't I put a dy dx here? Because you didn't. Because differential. Because I didn't take the derivative, yeah. right? Of the y. But I did take the derivative of the y here, so that guy needs a dy dx. Minus. What's the derivative of 2y? 2, two, two, two dy dx. Dy, 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 dy dx. Very good. <coughs> What's the derivative of 7? No, this one has to find dy dx, so we're going to have to solve for dy dx. Yay, algebra. Right? Okay, so here's just cleaning it up. We have 3y cubed plus 9xy squared dy dx minus 2 dy dx equals 0. When you have something in multiple terms and you need to solve for it, get all those terms on one side and move everything else to the other side. So we're going to keep the dy dx terms on the left. And we're going to move the 3y cubed over to the right. What can I do now? I want to solve for dy dx. Very good. Did you guys hear? What do you say? Factor. So we factor out a dy dx. And then we divide. So coming up here, so dy dx equals negative 3y cubed over 9xy squared minus 2. Does that kind of make sense? You guys ready to try one on your own? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so, by doing this, like this helps you find the derivative of like functions that are crazy. It helps you find the derivative of expressions that are crazy, sure. It also is going to help us huge when we get into the first really big applications, which is called related rates. Any of you guys heard the BC kids talking about related rates? Yeah. Yes. No? Yes. It's an infamous quiz in BC. So, yeah. They don't take tests in BC. They just take quizzes. Right? They have big quizzes and little quizzes. There are no tests. Why? Just, that's just how Mr. Jones is. So, anyway. Um, okay. So, let me give you guys one to try. So, I want you to... Find 
dy dx if x squared minus 2y cubed plus 4y equals 2. So we're keeping it simple, no product rule, try it on your own, see how you do. Do you guys need another minute? You guys at least get the first line? All right, let's see how we did. You tell me. What's the answer? 2x. 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 2x.